So we had a garage sale at my house this week because stuff piles up over the years and my wife said, we have too much junk. But when I saw what she had out in the driveway for sale, I was shocked. I mean, that wasn't junk. Honey, you can't sell this painting. We bought that our first year of marriage. We can't sell the crib. Our babies lived in that thing. Not my wakeboard, I got that in high school. But my wife, almost always the voice of reason, said we got that painting 10 years ago and it doesn't match our style at all anymore. And the kids are in beds now. The crib takes up too much space. And what do you need a wakeboard for? You're a teacher, you don't have a boat. <laughs> I mean, she's right. But I do have this emotional connection to these things that I don't need, you know, this sentimentality. And it can be hard to move on and part with them. And this has got me thinking about teaching and some of the things that we still do that maybe it's time to get rid of. You know, what is it in your teaching practice that needs a garage sale? What might have been useful at one point or maybe was useful for you when you were a student, but might not be working anymore? Might be time to get rid of. For me, it was the long 45 minute lecture. When I was a kid, this was primarily how I was taught. I mean, I usually hated sitting in those classes, but this is what teaching was to me. And so when I started off teaching, I spent a lot of time giving these big long lectures. And to be honest, I'm pretty good at it. And I love giving them. I have no problem talking for 45 minutes, especially when it's something I'm interested in and I, I like what I'm talking about. But I saw time and time again, no matter how much I enjoyed speaking to students for a long time, after about 15 minutes, kids would start to nod off. It's nearly impossible to captivate students for long lectures, and so it became a waste of time. And there's a lot of research to prove that. So even though I had this history and this emotional connection to giving long lectures, I had to get rid of them at the garage sale. This meant shortening direct instruction to make it more effective, doing more collaboration, discussion-based learning, projects, more student ownership, less Trevor teacher ownership of the learning. And you know what? Students started learning and engaging more, just like the walls of my house now have more space for newer, fresher artwork. I wanna challenge you to think about what in your teaching practice needs a garage sale. Maybe you're grading too much because you've always been told to grade everything students submit, but it's burning you out. You can't deal with the piles of papers on the weekend anymore. And so it's time to garage sale that practice and be more selective of what you grade. Maybe there's a lesson or an activity that just isn't working like it used to, and you've known this for a while now, and it's time to retire it. Maybe you've set your room up a certain way for a long time, and it's time to try something else. Maybe you need to garage sale that pressure you put on yourself to be a perfect teacher because that just ain't working anymore and you just need to put that energy into something more useful and more useful and productive areas. I think as educators, we're so often given new ideas and new strategies to get better at what we do, but there's gotta be space for that. There's gotta be room to grow and sometimes that means making that room by discarding practices that aren't working like they used to or never worked and you finally see that. Just like selling the recliner in the basement that nobody ever even sat in. Even though I was totally going to use it someday. Oh, and good news? Nobody bought my wakeboard and I am definitely gonna be using this bad boy soon. Yeah, I bet. <laughs>